Welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be making the second side table. If you watched the first video, that was a side table where I made it completely with power tools. I used a domino machine to uh, attach the legs to the rails. Whereas in this side table, I'll be using more hand tools. I'll be hand cutting the mortise and tenons and using a spoke shape for the curves and a, and a hand plane to create the tapers. So I hope you enjoyed this version of the table and let's get straight into it. So what I'm doing now is just milling up some ash on some great old Wodkin machinery. I used the ready lam saw and the rip saw to cut it down to size. And now I'm using the joint to, to flatten the faces. I milled the wood up oversized and I'm going to leave it to settle for a couple of days so then the wood can move in any way it wants and after two days I'm going to plane it back down to its final dimensions. Which I think the legs were 21mm thick. I tilted the panel saw blade to two degrees so that the legs flare out a bit. Then I put the legs in a jig so that it will create a flat side for the rail to join. Then I started to cut the taper on the band saw. I went as close to the line as possible without touching it. Now I'm using the jack plane to take it back down to the line and make the legs all smooth. I'm using the Lee Nelson low angle jack plane, I think it's number 62. Now here I'm marking out a chamfer which actually tapers off and I'm planing that chamfer down with a block plane. Is it a good shot? Not at the moment because you're out of focus. You've got to come closer to the end for it to then be in. Yeah, see that's good. So now it's time to cut the mortises in the leg. I'm using a Wodkin mortiser, which is a very well built machine. The whole machine is basically made from cast iron, that's why they last so long. I wrapped some masking tape around the bit and I'm using that as a depth stop so I know how far to drill down for the mortise. So for this side table I'm doing haunched mortise and tenons. Now I'm roughly cutting out the tenon on the rails. I'm being very careful to saw near the marking line but not on it and then I'll chisel back to the marking gauge line after. I used a router plane so that I get perfectly flat faces on the tenon. I recommend using a router plane for doing tenons. It makes it a lot easier and you get a very flat face at the end of it. And then we have the haunched mortise and tenon, which closed up very nicely. And we had no gaps, which is what I love to see. Here I'm drilling out holes in the rails for the screws to go in to attach the top to the base. It's much easier to drill it now before the legs are glued on. 
Also, before the legs are glued on, I am cutting the decorative profile on the bottom of the rail. I also did this on the bandsaw offset from the line, then I'm using a spoke shave to plane it back down to the line. I had to do this before the legs were glued on, otherwise it would be impossible to get into the corner with the spoke shave. So now it's time to glue up the base. I cut some angled blocks for the clamp so that the clamp would actually be clamping up parallel and also won't damage the legs. Then once the legs were all glued up, I ran them through the thickness sander, which is such a helpful machine. It made sanding very quick and actually enjoyable. There was still a bit of hand sanding to do though because it was a coarse grit and also the direction that the belt was spinning was going in the wrong direction for the rails so then I had to sand those scratch marks away. The last things to do on the legs was to add a chamfer to the bottom so that when you move the table the grain on the bottom of the legs is much less likely to split out. And finally I had to create the half lap joint so then I can join both leg frames together. I used a carcass saw which is basically a cross cut saw I used a fret saw to remove the waste quickly and then used chisels to take it back down to the marking gauge lines. And it ended up being a nice snug joint. So now it's time to make the top of the table. I'm using MDF. Don't worry, you won't see the MDF. I'm gonna add an oak lipping around it and also I'll add an oak bookmatch veneered top. I'm using MDF for the middle because it's cheaper instead of having a solid oak top. So what I'm doing now is creating the lipping to go around the MDF. I shooted the angle on the lipping to 22.5 degrees because that is half of 45 degrees and that is the angle of an octagon, if you know what I mean. So here I'm gonna use a strap clamp to squeeze the lipping around the MDF and you guessed it I put it back through the thickness sander because if you've got this tool why not use it and look how quick this is the video is sped up but it was quick <laughs> so I used the panel saw to create this 45 degree template and what I'm doing is referencing the flat side of my marking knife up against the flat side of the MDF triangle and that should give me the rough shape of the triangle I need. I still need to shoot the sides after though because the knife doesn't give a clean finish. I'm using some beautiful quarter sawn oak for the sunburst and the final look of it actually turned out fantastic because the medullary rays also pointed into the middle as well as the grain which created a very nice illusion. So here I'm using a veneer shooting board and I planed each side of each section individually to make sure the edges were perfect. And now I'm using veneer tape to put the sunburst together. Veneer tape is great because once it dries it shrinks which will pull the sections together even more creating an even tighter seal so there'll be no gaps at all. And now I'm using tight bond cold press glue for veneer and then I put it in the hydraulic press to have even pressure all the way around the top. And now I'm using a chisel to chisel back the veneer to make it flush with the lipping. I'm making sure I'm chiseling at an angle to go in the same direction as the grain because I definitely don't want that to split out now. And now I'm sanding the top with a random orbital sander. I might have started at 180, if not I went to 240 and then 320, which left a very smooth finish. So there we go, the chamfers look very nice. I added a larger chamfer on the bottom because it, it looks nicer like that. And now it's time to drill out some pilot holes for the screws to go in. Again, I added some masking tape around the drill bit as a depth gauge to make sure I didn't go through the top because that would have been a disaster. And there we have it. Right, and there we go, I hope you enjoyed this side table. I forgot to mention, in the previous video I made a poll asking you guys whether you prefer a Festool Domino joint or a hand cut mortise and tenon. Actually, the hand cut mortise and tenon won the poll. 
It's not surprising, there's quite a lot of Festool haters out there. But anyway, I enjoyed making both side tables. I think I prefer this one though, because it has a sunburst top and lipping and the, the tapered chamfers on it. I think that's very classy, but they both turned out pretty well, so there's nothing to complain about. Please let me know what you thought about the narrating in this video. I'm wondering whether I should do that more. I'm not actually sure if you'd enjoy listening to my voice for 10 minutes. Let me know in the comments down below if you thought it was enjoyable or not. If you want to know what I'm getting up to during the week, follow me on Instagram. I I post quite a lot over there. I've got a lot of great videos coming up, so if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you've got any questions, comment down below. And yeah, thank you for sticking to the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.